Bruce, obviously this had to have been a pretty emotional couple of days for you, for the team. How did you process Chris Holtman being fired? And as team captain, how do you try to lead this team through whatever comes next? Um, I found out um, uh, we had a meeting with Gene Smith and just broke the news and felt like um, we needed to go to a different direction. Um, as a player, I feel like that's way, uh, way beyond my like uh, concerns because as a player, you need uh, you need to be focused on your like your your academics and also your um, your play on the court and how much work you put in to be the best basketball player you could possibly be. Um, uh, I'm just trying to make sure as a as a captain, I just make sure everybody is just still on the same accord and still trying to finish the season out well. I feel like we still have things um, things to accomplish. Things we still feel like still have of our goals still in plan. I feel like you know, especially just trying to win this big game on, on Sunday. What does it take to keep that focus when? I, I presume nobody saw this coming, you know, kind of like wake up Wednesday morning and, and this all changes. What? It, how do you try to keep that focus and what does it take to to do that with all this going on outside? Oh, like I've been saying, I just take it one day at a time. Um, uh, things happen, is, uh, college basketball is a business. So I'm just trying to make sure me and my guys is all on the same page. That's really my biggest focus and taking it one day at a time. Uh, yesterday we had a great practice. I feel like uh, the energy of my teammates was there, the confidence uh, I, feel, I feel like we still have. That we're going to just keep moving on, just going to take today and get better today, understand what we got to do to beat Purdue, and I feel like everything will take care of itself. Uh, Bruce, Coach Dibor talked about how there was a, a pace and an energy he brought to practice. Uh, what did you feel like practice? How did it go? Did it feel different than Coach Holtman practices? What was it like? Uh, it, was, it was highly intense yesterday. Um, we three days out, so we we can uh, almost get up, up, up and down uh, um, like 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 almost in all seasons because you're not so, so close to the game. So us uh, uh, yesterday was a lot of lot, lot of fast pace, a lot of a lot of urgency trying to trying to get stuff accomplished in a short amount of time. So we so our legs won't. We'll die out instead of having like a three hour, three and a half hour practice to get all the stuff that we need to get accomplished. But I feel like yesterday was a good pop, understanding that uh, uh, a crazy incident happened and that you had no control over as a player and just trying to make sure my team all on the same page to go win a big game against Purdue. Yeah, he said that Aaron Kraft stopped by, um, your point guard as well. Just what does it mean to see a player, so much history here, come back in a moment like this? What kind of message does that deliver to you guys? It's sure, sure a lot, uh, especially how Buckeye Nation, even alumni that play here at Ohio State, just care so much about the players, about the program, and the the excellence that sh they want to be brought here. So when you see when you see a player like that with that caliber, with the with the stats and accolades that he had at Ohio State, for him to come the next day to practice and watch us and give us some great words of advice to just keep playing, keep having that confidence, on, on greater things as ahead is it was, very, it was very good for our team. Bruce, sometimes in sports, something happens like with Holt, it can, an odd kind of motivation can come out of that, like among the players. We're going to prove people wrong now. There's a chip on our shoulder. We're going we're gonna to do this for Holt. Is there any of that? Are you sensing any of that yet? Do you think that'll happen, like sort of you know, regrouping and, and, and proving the world wrong? I feel like um, when he was here, we were still trying to prove people wrong. So I really, I, really, I wouldn't want to say that. Um, what was he doing for Hope? I feel like Hope one is one of us, us players, the one he recruited, just to do it for ourselves and just do it the Ohio State basketball way. And that's with Hope, and that's or or that's with D for the rest of the year. So us, uh, us as players, we just know we playing for the guy next to us at the end of the day because we we went through the. Um, the, the, the season workout with the within the summer and in the preseason, we just kept fighting together. You bring bring that karate with your teammates and that bond that that's unbreakable. That these are relationships that you gonna have outside of basketball. So and when you seen that happen, we just knew like uh, we had to get closer, even closer than we was before because it's a crazy time. They understand that college basketball is a business at the end of the day. So me having that, having my guys that with me that I stay in the dorm that's those like or with Jameson. And Dale, the, the the new guys, just to come together. That um, we need each other more than ever now. So, I feel like now um, we just kind of the same motto we have. Still trying to prove people wrong, trying to um, keep, just keep getting better each and every day. I feel like everything will take care of itself. Um, <clears throat> I I guess for you, uh, I mean, for you personally, how quickly was it after you got the news that news that it was you know moving on and focusing on on this task at hand here? I mean, do you allow yourself to any time to kind of process the emotions of this? Uh, it was kind of hard to really like process it. You know what I'm saying? Especially if we got a big game on Monday. So you know, the main, my main focus was trying to make sure I was straight as myself, make sure I'm mentally uh, mentally and 
um, there to talk to my teammates and just to evaluate what we need to get at hand because I've never been, a, I've been never experienced it. Nobody on my team experienced it. No coaches ever have, have been this, in this experience. So I'm just trying to let my teammates know that uh, things happen and li life happens. You know what I'm saying? It's just really how you move on from it and, and, and continue to get better each and every day. I feel like me just installing that confidence back in my teammates that we still can, we still got things to finish. We still got, we still got um, hardware to go get, even though are we um, not the best season, the best record right now? But I feel like the next couple, next couple games in our in our regular season, I feel like we can go get those in, in the big season tournament. I feel like anything can happen, especially what happened last year. So I feel like um, we just keep putting in work, keep trusting the next guy in front of us, keep making the right play, offensively, def defensively. For anything, like it's gonna take care of itself. What about Jake Diebler? Uh, makes him could make him a really good head coach for you guys. Uh, I just feel like. Um, uh, he's he's young. Uh, he, he can um, he under he understands like much more being at a younger age. Um, his experience is how he played in college, high school is more fast paced, more on tempo. So that's what he pre presents um, himself out there on the court yesterday at practice, uh, trying to um, bring the pace, bring the, um, get more transition buckets, things like that to to increase our tempo, to increase the um, urgency on the court that we need to have for the finish out the year the, the way that he wanted. Um, but I feel like it can it can be a great role for us. I'm trying to have a, a different style of pace to, about us to to win big games in the future. You talk about being a captain and and whatnot. Did you talk to the team as a whole? Did you did you you and maybe Jameson or or anyone kind of stand up and and discuss anything with the rest of the team? Yeah, I definitely talked to the team. Especially I was like, yo, it was like, it's, it's really crazy. I was like, you woke up. Woke up this morning. I knew I had a bad feeling. I I just had a bad. Feeling. I didn't know what it was. And you see the news. On you see the Twitter. And you and you you look on on social media like everybody else. Like it's just really real. Like then um, you get a text from Eagles. Like we got to meet with Gene Smith. So you trying to really figure out what's all going on. So you get the real news. Really what it is. So and we had a meeting with the whole coaching staff. Gene Smith just talked about like um, this the this the move that I'm going to make. It's a, it's a business decision. It's high. It's higher than all. Uh, us players, us coaches, because that's a athletic director, and you see all, all sports. So he feel like he didn't make a change in a new movement uh, for Ohio State basketball. And as a as a as a young player, understanding college basketball and how NIL is involved is a it's a business now. Like it just it just it is what it is now. So now understanding that had a clear mind about it. Now I can talk to my teammates um, about what the situation is, how how I can look for. Like we just got to lean each other more now than ever because. Cause things can happen at any given moment. You just really don't know. So I was just explaining it to my to my teammates that uh, just we need to keep doing what we keep doing what we doing. Keep putting in work. Just taking one day at a time. I feel like everything will take care of itself. Uh, Coach Diebler picking up the pace a little bit. How does that fit you as kind of the the, the point guard, the spearhead of of the offense? Uh, I feel like uh, I could play multiple styles of basketball. I can play half court. I can play uh, up and down. Um, due to the just to the due to the style of play and the personnel that's on the court. I feel like lately, um I feel like in practice it, it reminded me back in high school how fast that I used to play. It like it was less than eight and ten seconds or uh, the most uh, cause then, you know, when I was in high school we had a shot clock. So like the ball was but the ball was up by like twenty to fifteen seconds um, by that time. But so it was just in practice yesterday it reminded me back in high school. But it, like it was just great pace and great energy. I feel like that's the way you get your conditioning out, um, get your conditioning up. It be, especially being three days away, and I feel like that pace and the the, the energy that uh, D bring. I feel like the team kind of needing right now. Bruce, you, you talked about meeting as a team, meeting with Gene. Did you guys have any sort of meeting with with Holtman? Uh, I feel like Homie meet Homie definitely. Uh, he met everybody individually. You know what I'm saying? As a man, he just wanted to be straight up about it. Um, that um, he he wanted to tell us before the news got out. Just trying to be a, just being a man. Just tell, tell everybody one on ones, especially just just what happened with his experience. Um, because Homie is a great guy, a great dude. He gave me an opportunity, a scholarship to play at, at a Power Five school, and I'm forever thankful for that. What he have done for me and the other guys that he have ever recruited at Ohio State. His family is great. Uh, his wife, uh, his kids, uh, he always, he always just, um, treated us like, uh, like we were his sons. Like he always, um, it was a big family guy. He was always over his house. Everybody just have fun, laugh, kick, um, kick it with each other. I really respect that as a man. At the end of the day, he was just growing us more than a basketball player. So I, I always respect the way he had done. But as a man, he just had to say like, this is what happened. I got to move. I got to move on. I got, I got fired. Just being straight up with us, and he, he said, 
I still want y'all to finish the, the season out strong. I love y'all, and I, I have care for y'all. So, you you said it several times how college basketball is a business. You guys could go in the portal right now if you wanted to yeah. put your names in there. Nobody did. If it's a business, what makes sense to not do that? Because um, it's just my morals and my values as a player and myself. I just never, I never, I just never felt like it was okay just to to just go separate ways and something not started. Especially if you as a captain, like you have a responsibility. Uh, especially as a as a man that you just doesn't, you just don't quit. You just, at least you at least finish it out and you see see what's happening after after that. But like during the process, doing the thing, I feel like you just you just don't quit. Uh, that's the thing my mom always taught me, just to finish things out, even though if you don't like it, even though it, like it kills you at, at the end of the day. But at least finish it out. Then after that, if you really don't like it, then you don't have to don't do you don't have to don't do it no more. But now, just me explaining to my teammates is that I'm not gonna go nowhere. I'm gonna finish the season out strong, like how how I started. I don't the, the cars I may lay how they how they found, but I'm not gonna quit on my teammates, definitely not not on my coaching, especially not on Buckeye Nation, but uh, and all my teammates on the same accord, like we're going to finish it out the right way and see who, um, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, Coach Diebler said that he met with each player individually when this was all happening. So what was that conversation like for you? And then maybe what were some of the things that he was saying to you, specifically being the this team leader? Uh, he was just being straight up with me, just be basically like, this is new for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Just like, this is not, this is not normal. You know what I'm saying you don't see a lot of coaches don't get fired midseason. It's just being I'm completely for it, but he's just saying like, basically make sure you you okay as first, or just as a human being, make sure you're okay mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. That you're okay, and then you can help others first. And then, because if you don't worry about yourself first, you also can get lost trying to help somebody else if you're not 100. percent I feel like that goes in life and goes goes with it in life as well. But I feel like he was just being straight up with me. He said, "Oh, your teammate gonna need you more than ever." But to make sure you, that you're okay at first. And I really respect that as a man, just, just trying to give me a um, foundation and give me advice for more than basketball. So to me, understanding that where I'm at mentally, I'm at, I'm at a way better space than I was a couple of days ago. So now I'm, I feel like I'm more able and more more optional to help my teammates out. Yeah, and then you mentioned that you liked his, his pace, the practice, the way that he goes about that. Is there anything else about his coaching style that you particularly like so far? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, he uh, he just got he just got basically promoted for like six games. So like, I feel like our, our bond and our connection is still the same at the end of the day. Um, uh, we haven't really haven't went over game plan yet. Cause we three days out. So now like today gonna be kind of different because now we're going over Purdue plays and what they like to do and things like that. So today gonna be a real because uh, I don't know like how you don't know. So I really don't know how today practice is gonna be. I'm just very excited just to uh, make sure my teammates all on the same page, having that confidence, and just be ready to play on Sunday. Bruce, thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you.